Welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host. How is everybody doing today? It is crazy idea time. Alright guys, I hope you bear with me on this because I have some interesting stuff. First, I want to start off with flipping through a bunch of different things here. Let me find... This is the one I want right here. So... If you look in the corner of your screen there, you will see that this is a rotary encoder. It turns either direction with little clickies, and then it has a push button on it. And it has uh, five pins that come out of it. So if we look at those five pins, let me clear the crazy time because this is crazy times. Okay, if we look at the five pins, we have a negative pin, a positive pin, then we have an A, B, and is that an S for switch? Sometimes A and B are called data and clock, which is interesting because that's what I plan on getting to in this video is using a rotary encoder as a clock and data input device for a shift register but that's where we're going and we're going to do some tests along the way because i don't know if this is technically true so this would be zero volts this would be five volts and we're not going to use the switch we're not going to connect the switch so how a rotary encoder works is it you have a 5 volt signal from A and a 5 volt signal from B and as you turn it in a clockwise direction the signal dips like this or like this it either A comes first or B comes first and that's how it knows the direction it's coming in it's going in so let me just move this out of here and I'll show you where I'm going with this. So, if I invert the clock signal or the, the data signal from, you know, going like this every time it's turned, if I invert that signal, every time I turn it, the A is going to look like this. which looks like a clock pulse it looks exactly like a clock pulse so if I do the same thing to the B B if I'm going in one direction is going to look like this now this one's actually over this so you have A here and then you have B. When B goes high, A is high. So that would be a 1. And then if you go again, when B goes high, by the A is still high, so that's a 1. So you can look at B or this signal here as your clock signal. And this could be your data signal and turning it in one direction will send a bunch of ones okay so let's let's erase this up here let's erase this up here and let's look at it in the other direction so in the other direction B comes first And then A is a after it. This isn't exact. We're going to measure this and stuff. But this again would be your clock, which would be B, and your data. So going in the opposite direction, where it clocks in data on the rising edge, a will be a zero when it clocks in data on a rising edge a will be a zero 
and same difference so by turning the rotary encoder say for example this way you could data clock shift ones into a shift register if you turn it this way you could shift zeros into a shift register and independently you could pull these clocks off and use them to just clock a circuit which I will plan on doing with one of these at on later um, examples of my of my TTL series and my logic series so a lot of those chips need a clock signal and a manual clock signal would be the best option on that so I'm going to get the oscilloscope on here and I'm gonna get the best view for that and I'll be right back alright guys I got this set up um, I just wanna preference this and I'm not the best with an oscilloscope I am learning I ugh, I used to be so well with one of these and now I have so much difficulty trying to do the simplest thing to to get it to work I don't understand what the problem is but anyways that's my problem let's take a look at how this rotary encoder works I have channel B is the purple and channel A is the yellow now as I spin this you can see that if I go clockwise B goes first so currently B falls and then A is still high and if I go the other way A falls first and then B falls after and then B stays fallen for a minute after A goes high so if I invert this signal I should get a clock type signal and we're gonna do that with an inverter here in LS7004 I'm sure that's a 7004 and LS7004 I believe is a hex inverter let's just plug it in right There's not power to that board. Pardon me. Alright, so plug that in. Let's put some power and ground here. Now this has six inverters on it. I'm only gonna be using two of them. This is what I want to see here is if I can invert this signal to be more like a clock pulse. And I should turn the power off to the board. Then we have our ground pin right there. Double check the pinouts on this. Seventy oh four. So pin one is the input, pin two is the output. So we'll unhook our oscilloscope. And then we'll put the A pin in pin 1, and then we'll use one on the other side, which is, we use pin 13, and then 12 into our outputs. So we'll grab two wires here. This one and this one, and we'll reconnect our scope here, and we'll reconnect our scope here. Okay, let's see how this works out with this inverter. Alright, we'll turn on power. Okay, so everything's at zero. If I turn it, 
I got a what is definitely a clock signal on one direction but for some reason I'm not getting output on this other pin could be the wire nope let's see here There we go. So you see how B, if you go this way, B would clock a zero because the clock cycle would be the purple. So the clock would clock and whatever it clocked would be what the top one is, which as soon as it's on the rising edge, it's a zero. If I go this way, when B clocks, there will be a one in A. So this way would be a one. This way should be able to clock a one. So you know, one click should clock a one in a shift register. And one click this way should should clock a zero. So you could actually go like zero zero one one zero one zero one. So you could input data into a shift register this way, and that's the point I didn't have this on camera I'm sorry so if I go this way I'm getting this would be a one and then this would be a zero so you could actually shift in data into a shift register by turning this and that's what I plan on doing but I just wanted to proof of concept this idea that a rotary encoder could be inverted through an LS04 chip into a clock pulse because if I just take off um, input 2 here let's take off channel 2 let's just turn channel 2 off so I have just channel 1 if I just take this inverted A channel and I turn this I have a clock signal I have a rising edge clock and I have a falling edge clock so if I have a logic series chip that needs a clock I could use my 555 timer clock but the slow as that'll go is maybe one second on one second off I could use a push button thing to advance the clock but sometimes maybe I want to advance it a bunch at once so I figured I came up with this using this as a way to clock multiple signals and with its little clicking motion you can you can feel the different bumps so next thing I want to try is hooking this up to a shift register and seeing if I can clock data in and out by turning it either way so stay tuned for that guys um, I hope you found this interesting um, if you guys are out there and you're building one of those breadboard computers I think using something like this to advance your clock manually would be a good idea and you could even set the button up to where you push it it goes back in auto mode you push it again it comes in manual mode so it could like save you you know five 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 timer some components maybe even some space and give you a little bit more versatility maybe I don't know just a little tip out there that's what I'm gonna do so it's gonna do it guys Visit me on these social media sites, and you can also support me on Patreon. The links are in the description below. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic day.